Next question is from Jeremy Longpre. Why do you guys think people have such a hard time losing fat in this day and age? What are the physical or psychological barriers you see most people have? And how have you guided people in the right direction on starting their journey? You guys ever look at the, the it's like a picture from, I want to say it's like at the turn of the century. I should say turn of the, the, you know, in the 1900s, right? There was a picture of a circus uh, what they used to call the circus fat man. Oh yeah, what the, what what an overweight or obese person yeah, back then you, looks like. You see to that like everywhere at Disneyland now. It's it's wild, yeah. right? Because you know back in those days, circuses had um, these these side acts or whatever, where you know come see the bearded lady or come see this you know the the you know the boy with you know you know flipper hands or the, whatever or the three hundred pound man. Yeah, like the three hundred pound man was and, so crazy. Yeah, and then, so you look at this picture of this man who was considered a circus fat man. So people literally paid money to to stand in front of this guy and, and look at him because he was so out of the ordinary, yeah. crazy overweight. Now, when you look at him, yeah, he's a big guy. He's definitely overweight. But you plug that guy into Walmart or any other you know store or, 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 scooter and, or Disney World, yeah. and he blends right in. And so it's it's insane how much our perception of this has changed. Now, what the hell has happened? Is it because where our, our our genetics have changed? Is it is it just no? It's our environment. Our yeah. environment has radically changed. It's a lot of things, right? I mean, it's uh, we move significantly less, way less. That same time frame you're talking about, Sal, you would have to go slaughter the pig. You know what I'm saying? You would you prepare it all day long. You'd wash your clothes by hand. Yeah, I yeah. mean, there the the amount of calories we were probably burning uh, throughout the day just to go about our normal day was probably two, three x what the average person uh, mm -hmm. does today. Not to mention, uh, food wasn't as readily available. Uh, you had to you know kick or kill, cook, prepare your meal just to have a single meal. Yeah, where couldn't door dash. Yeah, I mean, we we have access to food everywhere and then you throw in the fact of uh, how much we've made it palatable and and processed foods like we all we're always talking about i mean where we we got wrappers and packages with you know three five hundred calorie bombs uh, all over the place and so it's really easy to over consume in comparison back then so i think it's a combination of oh, all you want to know what it, mm -hmm. you know what you want to know what it took to make food hyper palatable 100 150 years ago it took hours and hours of preparation it took a lot of time to make and bake the cake or the pie or the meal that was hyper palatable you had to put a lot of time and effort into it they could not go to the store and cheaply purchase something that was hyper palatable and here's the here's the funny thing here's the reversal you go back 100 to 150 years ago the people that you found that were overweight were wealthy yeah the poor were never Almost never overweight. Yeah. Today, it's the reverse. Today, it's the reverse. Now, why is it the reverse today? Well, Adam was saying, these foods are so readily available and so cheap. And the reason why the wealthy now are not obese is because they have education. They're more educated. And so they make different food choices. But our lifestyle, it's just, let me put it this way. 150 years ago, 200 years ago, if you were to tell the average person that you were going to go to a gymnasium to lift heavy objects and put them down back on the ground. Yeah. They would have been like, why? Yeah. Just go till the fields. Yeah. I got some work for you to do. And yeah. you know, I, I'll, you don't even have to, you don't have to pay me for it. You know, yeah. it's crazy. Um, we are extremely sedentary, but also simultaneously extremely well, busy. We solved a lot of problems and we also created problems along the way. Side effects. That's just how it goes. I Un mean, yeah, unintendedly so. Like we, you know, to make everything easier in terms of access and, and you know, food more readily available. Like these were mega, you know, issues that we we're trying to solve and, and solve hunger. Like hunger was a big, huge thing. And, and we, we were able to create foods that lasted longer and, you know, tasted better and, and do this all under, uh, you know, for less money. So it and now it's just it's it's everywhere. So like learning how to create barriers for that is the new the new thing. We I think do. that uh, sleep and stress or you know the lack of sleep and high stress is at all time highs when you compare it to back then also i don't think you had you didn't i think it was different stress I, I you know we have to be careful when we say that we're more stressed today cuz i i doubt <laughs> we're more stressed than the generations that you know grew up were, were they were you know 
yeah, tuberculosis you're, 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 was killing Well, you. your stress back then was, I might not get to eat. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and so it, was also, it was also acute and then gone, whereas now we have these like little stresses all day. Yeah. That's what I mean. We're, we're, we take on everybody else's problems yeah. now. It's like, every, like we're, we're aware of like the world's issues yes. now instead and you, of just you, our local. And do you envision people back then uh, having trouble sleeping? I don't. I, I just don't see a hundred years ago yeah. lying in Not bed, when you're tired from labor, right? Job. Stimulated <laughs> from being on the computer all day long and your brain like turning all day long. I feel like most people back then are probably exhausted from their day. The sun went down. They probably sat by a fire or something. Right. Maybe had dinner and then probably in bed. I can't imagine. And they had like crippling arthritis, like you know, at sixty years old or whatever. So you know, they had that. And that's the that's the other part too. When I say that we were were extremely, uh, we're also busy. So. You know, you think about this. What I mean by busy is we're distracted uh, constantly. There were probably times of quiet solitude back then. Like, all right, I'm going to take the wagon to go get some, you know, whatever. Uh, it's going to take me three hours. You're by yourself right. with your thoughts in yeah. nature, right? Now, you can't even wait in line for two seconds without being on your phone and learning about what's happening around the world and whatever. Yeah. So modern life is now here's now I want to be uh, clear here. I wouldn't trade it for, for old life at all. No. I think what we have now is way, way better. It just has what are called unintended consequences, these side effects of solving these major problems. So how do we fix that? We have to uh, create practices. We have to create practices. We have to, structure it into our daily lives and we have to learn to value them because learn to abstain. Yeah, mm -hmm. regular life, modern life is not going to make you healthy and fit. Regular life is going to make you fat um, and chronically sick. You might not get the same kind of illness as your grandparents got, uh, but you're going to get these kind of chronic illness of, you know, inactivity and, you know, and, and overeating. So you just have to kind of structure in your life. So now it's like you got to schedule time to go to the gym. Yep. Otherwise you're not active. Now you have to avoid food. Whereas back then it was, you had to find food. Mm -hmm. You know, now you have to schedule time to be out in nature without all kinds of shit all around you all the time. Now you have to have a sleep routine. You didn't have a sleep routine back then. I mean, you, you know, you hit the pillow, you were exhausted. Yeah, That's how it's it like, happened. You know, turn the lights down. What lights? You know, yeah. <laughs> it's the sun that went down. So it's just a totally different. And if you look at uh, places now where people are less obese, it's because it's built into their life. Like if you look at like for example, you look at big cities like New York City, San Francisco, people tend to be less obese because uh, modern life there means you're walking more. You walk a lot, yeah. You know, um, you look at you know, certain uh, Asian cultures, they have implemented activity into their culture. So like you go to, you know, you see certain like Chinese culture, for example, old people are out doing Tai Chi and movements and it's just been ingrained in their culture. And so as a result, they have better health. You have to develop the structures, and it has to become behaviors, and that's the only way I was able to, to find, ever able to find long-term success with clients. Um, otherwise, it was always short-term success. Mm -hmm. 